Welcome back to another SCBWI featured illustrator interview. Every month we feature the work of a member with outstanding work for the children's illustration market. Today I have the honor of speaking with London Ladd. London, thank you so much for joining me here today for this conversation. It's so nice to meet you again, <laughs> you know, so welcome. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's, it's good to see you again. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So just to bring you all in the conversation, um, off, uh, London had a book signing and it's been I haven't been to a book signing in so long, but he had a book signing recently here in Atlanta with Teresa the Songbird. And um, I'd like to kick it off first with you talking about um, your most recent books, it looks like you have two that were released uh, this month, and or, I'm sorry, the month of January. And uh, so if you want to talk about those first before we get into the practice part. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I've been lucky enough to have two books like released back to back weeks. It's like world premieres, you know, two movie releases at the same time. Um, yeah. So January 10th, uh, You So Black came out, written by Teresa the Songbird an amazing spoken word artist. Uh, she's so taking her words, uh, her poetry, you know, in the work that I did for her book uh, was a very interesting and special experience to really take something that is poetry based, which is You So Black, then a week later, the next book that came out that that just came out uh, yesterday is uh, My Red, White, and Blue by Alana Tyson, which is more story driven. Two different books, but equally special for me because they tap into different areas of me as a person and how I create these stories visually. Um, how my approaches were completely different, uh, where one, You So Black, is very abstract in its way, where each page has something different. It's, a, it's one poem, but each page is it highlights something different in uplifting of Blackness, where is Alana Tyson's My Red, White, and Blue is, is, a, is a story about a grandfather and their grandson just talking about the American flag and what it means, the histor historical impact, both good and not so good for African-Americans. So to have these two books released back to back is special because they contrast each other so much, but yet achieving the same goal of for African-American youth, for all youth and families to really appreciate and, and, and talk and, and just, kind of share with each other as a family. Yeah. So one of the things that um, kind of impressed me about you as well as your work is it seems like you're very intentional about uh, what you create. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about what inspires you? And I know that you recently completed a, a graduate program. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to share anything about that and your inspiration for your work. Well, I think my grad, my, my thesis ties in pretty deep with these two books because they were all done between uh, September. I started working on them in September of 2021 and finished them. I know I finished the books pretty much by January and February of 2022. I finished my thesis, visual thesis and written thesis by April. So I was working on all three of these at the same time. So they, they really they're all linked together. They will forever be linked together because of me trying to really show Blackness in a way that is powerful, that is up, uplifting. Uh, so, and how we can appreciate our skin and, and the understanding of who we are, our identity in this, not just this country, but in this world uh, for the here and now and, and for the future. Uh, so with the thesis, it was really, really understanding, you know, Black representation within the United States primarily, whereas You So Black was 
it it like I said, it 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 was you so black was really for me meant to really be span the world. It was very outside, uh, like beyond the oceans that surround the United States, meant to go to all continents of all people of color, um, where the my red, white, and blue makes it apparent that we have a like we as African Americans, there's ways to look at the flag. And I can understand the little boy in that character because you can look at the flag and understand like to be respectful and be appreciative of the flag and the and, and as a United States citizen, but also understand, man, it 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 came with lots of struggle for those before and now and most up definitely going forward. So like the work that I do with those three projects, they just like impacted and wove within each other. So stylistically were, were my, were a lot of the stuff that I did for my thesis and You So Black was so abstract and represent and, and very representational. The, and that allowed for a lot of freedom. And my red, white, and blue brought out like a, like a so much understanding of the depths of the really the strength of African Americans to endure persevere push in advance mm. yeah I, I can't wait to see that one I have a couple of your books here um well mm -hmm. books that have your art in an American anthem mm -hmm. um you so black and black gold so um I'll be adding that one to my collection as well <laughs> yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. So can you tell us, um, because I know you have a specific, maybe not specific is this uh correct word, because I know you work in multiple mediums. Um, can you talk to us about your mediums that you choose, your materials, mm -hmm. um, um, how you came about you know using them and a little bit about your process? Well, the thing is, again, I keep re I keep referring back to grad school, but for me in 2017 i was doing a like that was my first life as an illustrator you could see my bookography with king march on all the way to midnight teacher and so when you see those books which i'm very proud of they they were very they were all acrylic based they the, the, the stories were very most of them were done in a certain era of the civil rights in the civil war era uh so the, the the tone and the color palette was very earthy, very limited. There were it was a lot of browns, a lot of somberness, a lot of expressiveness. But I could build I built cults like certain colors around those earthy tones. So entering grad school, I, I needed to push myself away from that. And really, I love colors. I love life. You know, we got to appreciate this life and life is full of vibrancy so that was important for me so when you see like like the image that i one of the images i did in grad school was my people because i did a i did a, a project based on langston hughes poems so when you see my people which has like five faces and it shows a sky um that i reading langston hughes poem and really understanding man this was written back in the harlem renaissance era and it, it's so relevant today it just trans transcends eras. So seeing those people more contemporary, it really inspired me to kind of really think on that level of understanding of for African Americans. So when like you so black is it's very it has that same level of like transcendedness. And I think you know, the way I see colors now with the brights and the colors and the cut paper textures and the, the abstract shapes that kind of like meld into each other. Uh, sometimes they clash, which creates really interesting angles. Um, and sometimes they kind of just go into each other so well. And then with the textures of paint on top of them, um, 
it's just something that I've developed and it really took took a few years to really develop. And it, but the thing is, it's me. Yeah. Again, it's not a style. It's just me. It's my voice. Absolutely. And and the thing that I notice is it doesn't matter whether you're working digitally or with traditional <laughs> materials. I can still tell that it's your work. Oh, um, thank you. To me, yeah, it, it absolutely looks like your work, um, even though I'm sure your approach might be different, but it still looks like London Lad. So um, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to hear that because I have been a big fans. Of, like when I started in this business, when I started studying it in 95, it was always I was always looking at Jerry Pinkney. Like, you know, I'm gonna start with the African American ones because that, those are the ones because I wasn't, believe it or not, like until I became a father, I never read a children's book. Mm -hmm. ever it wasn't until I got good night moon for my daughter mm -hmm. that was my first children's book and then I studied it in college as an undergrad so then seeing Jerry Pinckney's and Brian Collier's and Kadir Nelson's like those are the people that I really latched on to mm -hmm. and they had this distinct look that you knew and that's why you see the early part of my work like from King to Midnight Teacher those books are very influenced by them but at the same time I was trying to be them and not London lad so then the work that you see now with the piece that's in American Anthem Black Gold uh You So Black even the, the piece that I did in Recognize the anthology uh with the Hudson's mm -hmm. um and My Red White and Blue that that's me that is it's me. I can go on there and I can just see, I can, uh, when I was talking to my students yesterday, because I teach illustration, I showed three books, like Equa Holmes, uh, Fannie Lou Hemmer book. Mm -hmm. And I showed like two other books, like one by the Dillons, the jazz book, um, and one other book. And I was like, these are the things that influenced me. You could see elements that I just picked that I was like, I love that. So I don't like for style. I don't, I'm trying to get my kids not to think like that style. Don't think it, just think about who you are. Yeah. And this is me. This is me. Even the simplicity like of these sketches. This is me. This is all me. Yeah. Like these studies that you so black. I mean, I'm sorry, black gold. When you look at this work, like I'll show you this excerpt. For just this is just a practice page. But that's me. That's me developing. London lad mm -hmm. and hopefully my work will they could see my work and maybe if there's something in their work that they're like they can pick out of mine and say yes he like there's something in my voice that's very similar to his yeah. and I and I'm all for it I will I want to share and I, I want people to find their voice their visual voice and you know the only way a lot of times to find your voice is by studying yourself and other people and then it's like your signature as an artist starts to develop um, yeah, right. and, it, and that's just who you are it's it's just like your handwriting um the artwork shows up the same way exactly mm -hmm. I, you know anything in practice anything that you do and you've done in life and, and developed I mean just to walk it's not like we just came out walking yeah. out of yeah. the womb we had to sit and you know first learn to First of all, learn to kind of like move our arms around and then <laughs> flip over and eventually start to kind of move and then eventually upright and then you're finally standing and wobbly and then you can take steps. You know, it just it's just you just you just keep trying because if not, you're just going to be on the ground your whole life. And yeah. I think for illustration, that's what we do. You have to if the if they, if they ask me what's the key, just work, just just put in the get a sketchbook and just draw that's it that's all you gotta do don't this is just you will see growth from page one of a sketchbook to the last page of a sketchbook yeah just being diligent yeah I found sometimes that when I uh sometimes when I take breaks and I come back to the art um yeah. and, and when I say break I I mean like I'm still sketching I'm still observing I'm still in the world and and, and drawing but mm -hmm. I might not be working on a project um my work develops and changes in a different way because I'm developing and changing also. So um, I think we're always growing and, you know, finding ourselves and digging out new parts of ourselves as well. That, that's so funny you say that. I know you got another question, but it's funny when you <laughs> tap into that because that was my, that's why my first life as an illustrator kind of leveled off because I was not doing the extra work and I was, I was just stale. 
-hmm. and I wasn't practicing. I wasn't, you know, doctors practice medicine, lawyers practice law. They practice. Dentists practice dentistry. Yeah. So we as creators got to keep practicing. It's a practice. Yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah. Okay. So uh, so tell me a little bit about what made you join SCBWI. Oh, SCWBI is great because it's it's like it, they're creators like me, whether they're writers, illustrators, you, you have the ability to network. You have the ability to be inspired by looking at other people's work. You can reach out to people. There's conferences. Uh, there's information uh, you, just to understand the business. Whenever I go talk anywhere to anybody who wants to get into the business, when I talk to my students, I'm always referring to, I'm saying, do you know about this? Yeah. And I give them this information to say, this is, if you desire this, this is a tool that will help you. And not just to be on your computer, but then you get to go physically to talk. You can have a chance to talk to an editor, mm -hmm. an art director. You could talk to a peer. They can give you good, honest feedback that comes from a good place. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a great safe space for creatives. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because, yeah. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, because I want to write. I'm in the process of writing. And the only way I'm going to know how to write is talking and, and meeting like picture book writers, mm -hmm. this is the place. So I, I, I think SCWI is vital for anybody who is not in the business, but desires because yeah. the information is all there. It's what, what you do with it. Yeah. And you definitely have to be in community with other people to kind of stay the course. Cause it is, it's a lonely practice sometimes because you're in your studio, you're doing your work. Um, and that's not something that you do with other people, you know, mm -hmm. so it's good to be in community with other people, including, you know, art directors, editors, um, other people who are your peers, um, and other people who you can learn from as well. So, yeah. And yeah. you never know, you might get discovered that way. I mean, they're, they're looking, mm -hmm. they're looking for talent. They're always looking for that new voice yeah. to really, who could fit a project. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's about the initiative. Absolutely. Okay, so I have one more question. Mm -hmm. How can people learn more about your work? Where can they find you? Let's see, I have a website. If you just, uh, it's londonlad.com. Thank goodness. I don't think there's many London lads in this world. So <laughs> it's not hard to find. Just Google right. London lad with two Ds. Um, Instagram is my primary source of really sharing work in progress or finished work or any appearances or I don't put much random thoughts on there. I just like to share the work. Mm -hmm. um, but you can go to Instagram at London, L-O-N-D-O-N, dot lad, L-A-D-D. That's on Instagram. I have Facebook. Um, so it's like London lad. It's all one word on Facebook. Um, I don't Twitter. I have a Twitter account, but I really don't use it. I'm just figuring out Instagram enough. <laughs> so if I have the capacity to squeeze another one in there, let alone TikTok or anything right. else. Like, like just like I if I fit any more in there, then the work is gonna suffer. Right. And the work is more important. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Thank you for sharing your work with SCBWI for the month of February. It's been a pleasure to talk with you and um thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. And I'm a big fan of your work. And it was definitely a pleasure to run into you in person and really talk to you um, and wish you the best on your projects because I'm a fan of your work. And I just I'm happy to see everybody doing well. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, London.